In this lesson, we will work with Spring's IOC container. We will modify the movie rental application to rely upon beans created by Spring's IOC container. Essentially, this lesson serves as our Hello World application for Spring. Our goal for this lesson will be to create the rental service using Spring's IOC container. To create beans in Spring, we must provide the container with some metadata that details how to instantiate our beans. The metadata to construct the rental service must indicate that it requires a source locator to be injected as a dependency. To create this metadata, we will use XML, which will be eventually read by the Spring container to instantiate and assemble our beans. To begin, I'm going to create a new source folder, and this source folder will hold our Spring bean configuration file. Essentially, this is the metadata that we will provide to the container. I'm going to name this file applicationcontext.xml. Using some variation of application context is pretty commonplace when working with XML files in Spring. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a bean for the kiosk locator class. To do that, we use the bean tag. And I'm just going to use the short circuit end tag there. And the first attribute we need to specify is the class. So this is the type of our bean. So I start to type out the fully qualified name of the bean, and I can use IntelliSense within STS to assist me with writing the name of the bean. There I find the kiosk locator class, and we now have the type of our bean. And now I can give it a unique ID, which can be used to identify the bean. There we go, we created our first bean. Now we'll create a bean for our rental service. Once again, we use the bean tag, and I'll specify an ID, and we need to specify a class, and I'll use the IntelliSense once again, and we select rental service, and this time I'm going to use the full form of the bean tag, I'm not going to close it early, because we need to provide a constructor argument. If you remember, we were using constructor injection within the rental service. So now we need to specify which bean to inject as a constructor argument to the rental service constructor. And we use the ref tag to reference another bean within our configuration. And we can simply use the ID. So I'm going to inject the kiosk locator into the rental service as the first argument to its constructor. Now if we look at the rental service, we can see that constructor here. So when the IOC container attempts to instantiate the rental service, it will then pass in our dependency into that constructor. In order for our application to use the rental service bean, we must retrieve the bean from the IOC container. To do that, we use the application context interface. This is an interface that will allow us to interact with the Spring IOC container. Since it's an interface, we will need to use an implementation of that interface. Now I'm going to use a class path XML application context. This is an implementation that will read an XML file, such as the one we have created. So all I need to do is specify the name of our XML file, and it will look for that XML file on the root of our class path. So you can see that we created an implementation of the application context interface that reads our application context.xml file, which holds the definitions for the beans that we wanted to construct for our application. To retrieve the rental service bean from our application context, we call the getBean method on the application context. And we can provide the ID of the bean to retrieve the bean from the application context. Now you'll notice when I do that, it wants me to cast to a rental service. I would never advise simply using the getBean method that accepts the ID as the first argument 
I would always use the form that allows you to specify a class as the second argument. And this will allow our retrieval of the bean to be strongly typed. Uh, Spring will use generics to type the returned object to a rental service, so you do not need to perform a cast. Okay, at this point our application is configured to use Spring. One thing that you'll notice is we have a warning about a resource leak because we are accessing an XML file. So we need to make sure we release those resources. So we can cast our application context to a class path XML application context and then simply call the close method and that will take care of our resource leak. And one final thing I'd like to cover before we run our application is logging. So in order to set up logging, we need to add commons logging to our maven pom file, and then we also need to add log4j. and we want to make sure that we have the jar. Okay, so we have those two in our class path, and now we need to add a log4j.properties file to configure our logging. And I've actually cheated and I stole some configuration for our logging. So you can find that in your working files and just use that configuration. So I'm going to close these two files, and now we can run our application. So I'm going to look at our console, and it's interesting, so this is all of the debugging from the IOC container, and here you see our beans being created by the IOC container. There we see a rental service being created. We also see the kiosk locator being created. So we can see how Spring's IOC container creates our beans and how it wires them up. And then you can see here that our application was able to run. Congratulations, this is your first Spring application.